So today's video is going to be a how to play with your baby, how to entertain your baby, different activity ideas for your nine to 12 month old baby. Next I hope up, you enjoy we have water play. You can use different types of toys in a bin, a pot, a tub, and do some that sink and some that float. You want to encourage your child to reach for and to grasp the different toys, both that are floating and that are under the water. It'll help them to realize the different depths perspective depth perception. It'll also help with fine motor, their reach and grasp, cognitive development, object permanence, cause and effect, sensory, so many different things. Up next is a ball in an empty tissue box. So you can use different balls and you just put it in the tissue box and let them try to take it out and put it back in. Once they master this, you can place some rubber bands over the opening and make it a little bit harder. But this really helps them with their object permanence and their hand-eye coordination. And it's actually a good one that will help them with separation anxiety if they're going through that because that object permanence is really key to knowing that you know mom is still there even if she walks out of the room. The content presented in this video is not meant to replace the advice of your pediatrician and should not be used to inform treatment. The following is meant only to provide recommendations for newborn care. Please consult a pediatrician for medical treatment related to you and your newborn. Touch can provide many benefits to your baby's growth, physically and emotionally. It is a myth that holding an infant will spoil them. As we mentioned before, Responding to your baby by holding them and helping them calm down is so important. Being held, snuggled, and cuddled makes babies feel safe and secure, not spoiled. Placing your baby directly on your bare chest, skin to skin, is one of the best ways to introduce touch in these early days. In addition to soothing your baby, skin to skin can actually help with the baby's heart rate, blood pressure, temperature, and even their blood sugar. If you're breastfeeding, skin to skin can also help with milk production. Although you're doing a lot of snuggling and touching during the day, it's also important to practice tummy time from the start to help your baby's strength and development. We recommend doing this when your baby is awake on a firm surface. Some babies may be fussy or cry during tummy time, so start out at a few seconds and build up to three to five minutes several times a day. Now, onto some common questions that newborn parents have about infant care. Two. Two. Three. Ten or twenty by three. Ten. A hundred. He Ten. likes a lot of milk. Feeding a newborn may seem like a full-time job. At birth, a newborn's stomach is about the size of a marble, so they don't take too much at one time, but they do need to feed frequently. At this age, feeding is on demand. That means that your baby leads the schedule. However, sleepy babies need to be woken up to feed every three to four hours. In general, newborn babies should feed eight to 12 times per day. Some signs that can suggest your baby is hungry are rooting, hands in the mouth, or crying. It may be difficult to figure out when your child is hungry because babies get fussy and like to suck for lots of reasons, but you'll get to know your baby's feeding cues over time. For breastfeeding babies, try feeding about 15 to 20 minutes per side each feed. The baby's frequent sucking during this time is important to stimulate milk production, which typically comes in within two to five days after birth. For the first few days, babies are mostly just getting colostrum, which is very nutritious for a baby. For formula-fed babies in the first day or two, they may need only up to 15 milliliters. That's half an ounce at each feed. The amount they take will slowly increase with each day. Once a baby goes home, they will on average have one to three ounces about every one to three hours. If you're doing a combination of breast milk and formula, try to do the breastfeeding first to stimulate milk production and then offer the formula supplement afterwards. You can talk with your doctors or nurses about how much to supplement depending on if there are any other issues specific to you or your baby. At this age, babies do not need water or cereal, just breast milk or formula. Many parents ask, how do I know if my baby's getting enough milk? It's normal for babies to lose some weight in the first few days, up to 10% of birth weight. 
When you go home from the hospital, we usually recommend that you see the doctor in one to three days to check on the baby's weight. Babies should be back at their birth weight by two weeks of life. Monitoring wet diapers in addition to weight is a good way to assess if your baby is getting enough. There's an easy way to remember the number of diapers a newborn should have. At least one wet diaper on day one, two wet diapers on day two, at least three on day three, and four or more from day four onward. Usually babies will have approximately four to eight wet diapers a day moving forward. If your baby has fewer wet diapers than that or no wet diapers for more than eight to 10 hours at a time, you may need to increase feedings or supplement. When it comes to poop, there's a lot of variation. Your baby may poop every time they feed, poop once a day, turn red or strain while they poop, or even pass gas. This is all normal. We expect your baby to poop at least once in the first 24 hours of life. The first bowel movements are black, sticky, meconium poop. However, within a few days, stool will typically become looser, yellow, and seedy. No, no, not like that. Like this, very gently. <laughs> It is normal for babies to spit up. For some babies, burping can help them spit up less and possibly feed better. We recommend you try burping your baby in this newborn period. You may not get burps at this point, but we suggest burping your baby halfway through a feed and at the end of each feed. Common burping methods include holding the baby over your shoulder or holding the baby in a sitting position, supporting the neck and gently patting or rubbing the back. Try this for a couple of minutes. If you get a burp, great. If not, move on. Spitting up may occur when you are burping your baby or after a feeding when the baby is lying down. If the spit up is effortless in the color of the milk, we typically do not worry about it. Sometimes, spit up may even come out of the nose in addition to the mouth. That may seem alarming, but it is also okay. Remember, throughout feeding, burping, and spitting up, you can use your voice and touch to sports cast, label, and soothe your baby and show them a sensitive and loving response to their needs. Moving on from feeding issues to umbilical cord care, bathing, and diapering. The umbilical cord usually falls off between one to three weeks after birth. You do not need any alcohol or special lotions in that area. For one to two days before or after the cord separates, you may notice a small amount of blood and oozing. Ideally, you want to keep the umbilical cord area dry until the cord has fallen off. If you want to bathe the baby during this time, sponge baths are usually recommended until the cord has fallen off and are not required daily. Wipe the face. The no face. She has spit right here. Wash the neck. The neck. The neck. How frequently you bathe your baby is up to you. We're going to walk through how to do the sponge bath the first few weeks of life. Most important is safety. Make sure you have everything ready before you begin so you don't have to leave the baby alone. Use warm water for most of the bath and soap sparingly to not dry out the baby's skin. Avoid soaps with heavy perfumes or fragrances as they may cause skin irritation. As we mentioned earlier, bath time is an excellent time to sports cast what you are doing and have your face nice and close to your baby. Now we're actually gonna wash our baby. We're gonna go head to toe, saving that diaper area for last because it is the messiest. You can actually leave the baby's diaper on while you give them their bath to avoid any messes, which is what we're gonna do here. Take a little bowl of warm water and have the baby laying down on a towel. Then, using a washcloth, you start by washing the face, wiping over the eyes, explaining to your baby I'm just washing your eyes and your nose and cleaning behind your ears. Now I'm gonna find your neck and wipe in the neck area because all sorts of trap dribble and milk get in there. Doesn't feel nice. That feels nice. For the rest of the body, we can use a little bit of soap. So I have a separate bowl with soapy water. And we'll wash the rest of his body. Ready? We're gonna wash your hair. Doesn't feel nice. That feels nice, it's warm. Yeah. As you're wiping under the armpits and down the arms and hands, you can even count their fingers as you go along. 
talking to the baby throughout as you're doing the bath. Make sure to support the head well and turn the baby over to wash their back. All right, let's get your legs and your toes. There's five fingers and there's five toes on each foot. They match. Yeah, let me see this knee. Finally, take the diaper off and gently clean your baby as you would for a diaper change. We're gonna be focusing on milestones for your nine month old and activities that you can do with your nine month old to help them achieve those milestones. Now we're gonna move into some speech milestones. And this is anything having to do with how your child learns to speak, but also how they learn to receive and understand speech. The first speech milestone we're gonna be working toward is that your child at this age should be developing a more sophisticated babbling. And they may start to include different sounds. We're gonna be working toward this milestone by talking to our toys. We're gonna to grab some stuffed animals and we're gonna be talking with our child to the stuffed animals. We're gonna be encouraging lots of babbling and lots of different sounds. Oh, good try. You were so close. What about ba 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 ba? That's better. The next speech milestone we're gonna to work toward is that at this age your child may begin to understand yes and no. So we're gonna grab some toys that your child definitely can play with, like stuffed animals, maybe cars, anything that is perfectly fine for them to play with. And we're gonna grab some things that they're maybe not supposed to play with, like scissors or electronics. Can Ainsley play with a car? Yes! Ainsley can play with a car. What about this one? Can Ainsley play with the rattle? Yes! Yes! Look! These are scissors. Can Ainsley play with scissors? No! Ainsley can't play with scissors, huh? What about Dada's iPad? Can you play with Dada's iPad? No! You don't play with Dada's iPad, huh? Can we play with the car? Yes. Can you say, no? She knows that one pretty well. Now we are going to look at self-care milestones or otherwise known as activities for daily living. They are activities that help your baby learn everyday skills. This month, we are just gonna focus on one milestone, which is anticipating getting dressed. When you are getting your baby dressed in the morning, dress your baby slowly, pausing in places where your baby can anticipate the next motion. For example, put your baby's shirt over their head and pause. Your baby will likely begin to try to push her head through or pull the shirt down herself. You might even lift their arm up and begin to put their arm in the hole and see if they will anticipate pushing their arm the rest of the way through. Begin the motion and pause for anticipation. Over time, your baby will start to assist you more and more with that dressing process. You ready to get your shirt on? Okay, head first, here we go. Yay! Whoop, boop, 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 boop. And I'm in. Wow, good one, sis. Where's your other arm? Nice.